Hey guys, welcome back to another video. My name is Machine Builder, and today I will be teaching you how to use the new Feature Wall Generator. So basically, the Feature Wall Generator is a program I released a while ago, about six, seven months ago, which allows you to create custom structures in your Minecraft worlds. And I'm releasing an update for it tomorrow, but when this video is out, it'll be out. So there'll be a link in the description for that. And over here, this is a structure that I have imported into a flat world. It's just a chunk of land from another world, just to show that the feature rule generator can export structures of any size, whereas structure blocks are limited to 64 by 64 by 64. So here is my structure building world, and let's get right into it. So step one. You are going to want to build your structure in a world, and just any world, so I'm going to do it in this one obviously. So, we'll just build something random, doesn't really matter. Here we go, and I'll just do this. And then I might as well put some bookshelves here. There we go. So this is our structure that we're going to have spawning in the world. So now, once you've got your structure built in your world, just stand near it and write down those coordinates. So I'm going to just write this down on a piece of paper. 31, 5, 4, there we go. Now you can leave your world. So now that this is the world that I was in, so just remember your world name, and then open up the feature rule generator. So over here, there's a free version and a pro version. <clears throat> the pro version costs $4.350 or something, yeah, $3.50 USD, which is $5 Australian. It's available on itch.io, so there's a link in the description if you want to buy it, otherwise you can use the free version, but the pro version has more features and it's better. So I'm going to use this one. And then you open up the exe file. So there are a lot of files in here, but this is just so the program runs quickly because the old the, the old version 1 took ages to open, but I've updated it, but now there are more files. So don't worry, just run the exe and you're good. So once you've opened this program here, it's loading in all these files. So it will take a little bit. So wait patiently, don't just spam click it. Here we go. It is opening, and there we go. So this is the pro version. If you're using the free version, you won't get any of this pop-up stuff. But it just says, welcome. We need to verify that you bought it. Otherwise, you could just share the file with everyone. And then there's no point selling it online. So you continue, and then it will verify. So over here, you press authorize, and it will take you into the program and you can use it. If the program is not scaled correctly, like if everything is too small or too big for your screen, you can use control and scroll to resize things. And you can also set this to full screen as well if you'd like. I'll just leave it about this big. There we go. And again, scaling works. It should all work. And you're now gonna find a behavior pack in this list, or you can create a new pack, but over here we have a bunch of packs, these are from my folders, and if a pack doesn't show up here, then there's this folder here, frg underscore packs, this is where you'll put added behavior packs in if they're not showing up in the list, so I'll just demonstrate that quickly, I'll just grab one from over here, I'll take this pack from development behavior packs and put it into here. There we go, now it's in there instead. And now if I close this and reopen it, so now it should load in that pack from inside this folder into here, which is this one. So it does load it in correctly. So you can double click a pack here, or you can click it and then press load, or you can press create new pack, and I'm going to make a new one. Pack name structure, add-on demo, pack description, uh, this is a 
window of the feature generator version 2 and these are generated by the program so that's fine you don't need to worry about that by machine builder here we go now create pack and you can see here we are editing the pack so this is what we have i'll just do this there you go so now we can create a new structure open up that world that we have and if your world isn't showing here if you're using like Android version of Minecraft or something and you copy the world onto your computer then you can just press import world and then here you can select the folder where your world is so you'd open up a .mc world and then extract it out and then open the folder here but here we go structures so we're gonna double click this and then once it loads in we have the top-down view of the world and we're gonna go to those coordinates we wrote down so let me just zoom out and then we're going to type in the coordinates 31, 5, 4 and then go to those coordinates by pressing that button there and now we have this this little thing that we made and you can hit 1 on your keyboard and 2 on your keyboard to select the top down view and then 1 on your keyboard and 2 on your keyboard to select the like X and X and Y view pretty sure that's X, that's Y X, Y. So when you move around by left clicking, it all moves around pretty nicely. There'll be a button down here to change the view size as well, so you can zoom in and out. Currently, you can't do that, but that's a planned feature. And yeah, you can move around the view, you can select your area, and then once you've got an area selected, press continue, enter your structure name, test structure one. Born chance, this is how common it is per chunk. So, if you want it pretty common, you can then type in a value of like five, but that would be very common, so that would be for like custom trees. If you want rare, do 0.1 or less than that, but I'm gonna do five just so we can find it. And then we don't need to include air because it's gonna be on the surface anyway, but we will enable grounded check so it won't be floating in the air. So, now we're gonna select surface over here. And then you can set the Y offset. I don't want to offset it. Actually, I'll offset it by one. So it'll be in the ground because it's moved down one block. And then you can also customize structure NBT. Uh, this one does not work currently. Um, neither does... This one does work, but this one does not work. Obviously, you can't do anything. This one here, though, is very useful. We'll get to that a bit later. And it's only the pro version as well. This editing structure thing is pro version. So continue, and then we can select the preset. So I'm just going to add the overworld on land preset, which will make it'll set all the biome tags for the structure to spawn in the world. Also, the feature rule generator will automatically find biomes in the opened pack. So if you have any custom biomes, the tag should all show up here. And you can add a biome just by doing this and clicking it. Just to the biome whitelist, this is where the structure can spawn and this is where the structure can't spawn. But you can click here just to remove them. But over here, we're gonna add on land. There we go. And create structure. And there we go, finished. And here it is, test structure in one basic structure. And if we go over to our Commodore Mojang path over here, you can see we have our structure A folder, which is the pro folder that the program generated. There's a dot feature generator folder with a data.json file. And in here we have the structure we made, just made. So it's all in here. And we also have that manifest we just wrote. That's it. Just writes it out for you. And then in the pack, the pack icon is just something default. You can change this if you want doesn't matter but there we go now that we have that add-on created I'm going to create a new world structure world creative and then experimental gameplay has to be on there we go so experimental gameplay must be on for this enable your pack so this is the one I just made I'll turn multiplayer off so no one joins me but that's the one I made read more it's got my whole description I wrote, game, and then create. So now that we're in the world, we can already see 
one structure is here. There's another one right there, over here. As you can see, it generated kind of in the ground, but we did set it to a negative one value. So as you can see, it's all working correctly. This is the structure we made. It generates around. If I just fly out a little bit, here we go. There's another one. And they're also randomly rotated. So there's another one. And there's another one. As you can see, they're very common. So if you're making something complex, you wouldn't want it this common. Also make sure you keep structure sizes not too large because there's a bug where they get cut off on chunk borders. It's just the way the generation works. As you can see, they're pretty common though. There's a cool ravine here. So now let's get on to making the structure spawn in the sky. Okay, now that we're back in this world, this is the structure building world, I'm just gonna build a floating island. So I'm just gonna build off this quickly here, out to here. It's just basically a lump of earth that will spawn up in the sky. And then I'm just going to put something on it. Why not? There we go. Very random. There we go, so now you write down the coordinates, so stand near it. And then I'll write these down, and then leave the world. You have to make sure you add the world. There we go. So now, we're here in this menu like we were before, press new structure, open up this structure building world, and then find where it was, or type in the coordinates like we did last time, and I'm just going to move this up a little bit so it's easier to find, there we go, so one, two, one, two, and there's also a cactus somewhere up here, so I'm just going to select a bit higher, so now continue, structure name, uh, floating island test spawn chance uh, I'll set it down to 2.5 don't want grounded check because it's going to be in the air I don't need to include there because it's already in the air so it doesn't matter and then I'm going to make it spawn in the sky spawn between 200 yeah spawn between 200 and 90 so it will spawn above 90 and below 200 and then there we go add preset, we can just add the overworld and overworld generation and then remove those, so we can just go overworld. So now we'll just spawn in the overworld, be floating in the sky, that should be it, and then we create it, here it is, that's done, you don't have to press save and exit because it's already updated and saved, but now if we go back into this world, you can see these structures are spawning, the ones that we just created, and as you can see this is above Y90, and it's below 200. So if I keep flying around, there are lots of them. As I set the spawn chance pretty high. But as you can see, this is what we built. And it's spawning in the world. There's another one. They're pretty much everywhere. Okay, now that we're back in this world, I'll show you how to make an underwater structure. So I'm actually just going to speed up this process and just use this one that I already have. So I've just built some random thing here, doesn't really matter what it is, but it's here, that's all that matters. So I'm going to write down these coordinates, there we go, leave the world, create a new structure, open up your world, open up the structures world, and then you can either find it again, or remember and write it down, write the coordinates down, but there we go. Continue, underwater test, here we go, I'm going to set the chance to 5%, I don't want to include air. I will enable that, and then I'll also set it to underwater, and negative one, just so it's a little bit buried. Continue, there we go, and now we're going to add preset water bodies, so now we'll spawn in the water. I'm actually going to remove rivers and lakes though, so it's only the ocean. There we go, great, and here it is, underwater test. So now if I go into this world. There we are, so now let me just find an ocean, and I'll be right back once i got an ocean. Okay, so here we go, found an ocean, and found a structure. Here it is, there's one of them there, there's another one there, there's another one over there, there's one there, one there, one there, 
as you can see they all spawn correctly you can have seagrass on top of them but they're all down now and yep they seem to be working so now we'll get on to how to make underground structures okay now that I'm back in this world I can go ahead and build a little underground area that I'd like to spawn so I'm just gonna build something random so this is the shape of the dungeon that we want we want this to spawn underground randomly so we're just gonna finish with this bit but now we're gonna grab out a structure void because we want this inside bit to be filled with air but we want this corner bit especially to not be filled with air we want the normal generation there so what we're gonna do we're just gonna fill in all this with the structure void blocks just so that the game knows to not put any like to not fill this bit with air so here we go and there we go and then just two more bits there we are so now that we have this bit that's also a rabbit here those rabbits are going to annoy me so I'll just fill this bit with lava there we go uh -huh. okay we have this structure it should all be correct Things are right, and then stand on it or stand near it, write down the coordinates again. But now that we have that, close the program, close Minecraft. This world, you don't have to fully close Minecraft. So open up your program, new structure, structures, enter these coordinates 59, 13, 26. There we go. And as you can see here, that's the shape. Select it, continue, and we're going to include air so we actually get the inside not full of stone. And then into structure name, underground test. <clears throat> Spawn chance, we'll set this to 25% so it's a lot easier to find because it's harder to find stuff underground. Minimum y value here will be 20, maximum will be 25, just so it's in that area so it's very easy to find. But that's all we need. Continue to buy and selection. I'm going to do this so it doesn't spawn underneath oceans, rivers, or lakes. I should just make it not spawn in oceans so that way it won't occasionally be peeking up through the bottom of the ocean floor, which does happen with underground structures. So just overworld and overworld generation, create structure. There we go. Now it's here, underground test. By the way, you can also go back and edit structures. So you can change the name and then you just press create structure again and it will change it. You can also delete them or copy them. And then here we have underground test two and underground test one. So let me just delete that one because we don't need it. There we go. We have this. Let me just change this name back. Continue. Create. There we go. That's there. Open up the world. There we go. So now that we're in the world, if I just go over to a not ocean place, I'll just teleport far away. And then we'll go down between 25 and 30. So around here. And oh, a mine shop. So now we just find the structure, and then I'll be right back once I found it. Okay, here we are. So I dug a tunnel this way, and I found one. So this is the structure. As you can see over here, it is bookshelves. And then over here, this corner. As you can see, it's filled with gravel and random things. So it's the normal world generation applied here. So this bit of the structure was actually left untouched, while the rest in here is still still has air inside, and the torch and the bookshelf and the spawner. So that all worked correctly. So that's how you create underground structures, complete with air pockets and like filled in gaps with like where ores can generate and stuff. So now I'm going to teach you how to make custom loot tables for your chests and things. This is actually a pro only feature of the program, so if you're not using pro, it won't work. Just keep that in mind. So if you want that, just go ahead by the pro on each.io. There we are, so we're back in this world, and now I'm just going to build up a structure with some containers. So I'm just going to do this, put a block of iron now and then a block of gold beside it, there we go, gold, 
So this will be the structure. We'll just form like this. Chest, chest. And I'm just going to put a barrel and a shulker box. There we go. And now, what you're going to want to do is write down the coordinates of your structure again. 51, 5, 4. And then I'm going to write down the coordinates of this chest and this chest, just so I know the difference between them. These will be different. They're able to be tell the difference of because they're barrels and shop boxes and stuff. But the one on the iron block is at x50, and the one on the gold block is at x52. So I'll just write that down so I know the difference. Iron, gold. There we go. So now we can leave the world. And now a new structure. Structures. And I'm going to go to the coordinates, which is 51, 5, 4. I typed something wrong. There it is, somewhere over here. Oh, no. 51, 5, 4, go. Oh, yeah, I did. There we go. This is where they are. So I'm going to select this, select that, continue, and then I'll call this chest. I should call it loop table demo. Loop table demo. Spawn chance 5, include. Just set ground, surface, and then customer structure MVT. And this button will only be here in the pro version, so you'll need to buy that. Set container loot tables, and here we have the chest. And this one's at 50x, which I know is the one on the iron block, and that one's on the gold block. And then these are the barrel and the shulker box. So this chest, I'm going to set loot table, and then here we can enter a loot table path. So this will be the JSON file, but I'm just going to press cancel, and then open loot table creator. This is another secondary program inside the first one. So I'm just going to press new loot table, add pool. This is just a tool to make some loot tables quickly. You can obviously write them in JSON or use an online tool which I'm sure there is as well, but I'll do this. So this pool is going to have a roll chance of 1 to 1, and then add an entry, and then it's going to call this one uh, iron ingot, and then it's going to have 5 to 10 iron ingots, weight 10, and I'll increase the rolls to 1 to 8. Data value 0, don't want to enchant it, don't want damage, add another entry, Iron Sword. If you have a custom item as well, you put the namespace, like namespace, Iron Sword, whatever it is. But I don't have custom items, so I'm just using default vanilla items. And one, pretty sure you can just do one. And there we go, weight uh, two, data value zero, enchant with levels. I'll just set that to between 10 and 20 levels. And then damage is the amount of damage on the weapon. So if you want it not damaged, 0.0, .0. if you want it half damaged, 0.5. So I'm going to just set that, and then there we go, save loot table, and then you can type in the file path. So I'm going to create a new folder, loot tables in my pack, uh, chests, demo, table, iron.json, there we are, save, oh well, I already saved it anyway so it doesn't matter. Close loot table creator, and now this one here is on the iron block. So I'm gonna click it, type in chests forward slash, and then you get the path that you just made. So loot tables, chests, demo table, iron. So I'm gonna just copy that, and loot tables will automatically be added to the front of the path if you don't include it. So we'll just do chests, demo table, and, and now it's set, and that will be saved, and then I can set a gold loot table here, which I'll do, and then I'll be right back once I've made that loot table. There we go, so now I've set all these chests and barrels and shopping blocks to have loot tables. Press save loot table changes, and then save MBT changes, and it shall be saved. So continue to buy them selection on land, do the th same things you've done last time. And now we have this here, and if I go into the structure pack folders, you can see here we have features, and we have the new files, Loot tables, I have some loot tables here that I just made. And there we go, that's all set up. So if we go into this world, and I'm just going to go up. Uh, 
There we go. And fly around till I find the new structure. There it is. There we go. Open this up. As you can see, they're all enchanted. There are some iron ingots in here. There are some swords, kind of broken, not really. And then the gold one is gold. Here there's some dirt, and also here there's dirt. There's another one over here. As you can tell, loot tables are they are generated randomly. That one has mending. It's a good sword. As you can tell, it's all working correctly. So now that that's done, that's pretty much all there is to the program. You've got your loot table generator. You've got underground structures, surface structures, underwater structures, and structures in the sky. And then you can also import your own structure. So if I just save and quit here. Over here, if I press new structure, I don't have to select the world. I can just press use empty structure if you already have, an, have one of those files set up. So you can just import that one and then you select it and then press open, but I don't have one, so I'm not going to do that. But back, and here we are, we have these. These are all our structures. So I can just save and exit this, and that's it. That's the program. And again, if you are using the free version, you won't have to go through the initial verification process, since obviously there's no need to. The pro version does require Wi-Fi to run, since it verifies your accounts. But over here, opening the free version, once it decides it wants to open, here we go, get started, so please consider buying the pro version, but in here, everything just works, you can open the same things, this button doesn't do anything currently, it will later, um, but if we press edit, as you can see there's no options, back to structure, new structure, if I just select something random, we go one two one two there we go and two one there we go continue as you can see you can't edit your structure in BT since it's not the pro version let's go back there we go everything works so thanks for watching Make sure to like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and if you want to support this, you can obviously pay for the pro version and get extra features, and you can also join my Discord server, there'll be a link in the description for that, so if you have questions or want to, I don't know, need help with anything, just go ahead and ask. You can also donate to me on PayPal, there's also a link in the description for that, and yep, that's about it. Thanks for watching.